So here we are in the Cottonwood border at the Denver Botanic Gardens. And this is really a stylized native garden. So there's a lot happening here. And it's a great way to showcase what you can do with a lot of native plants. And this is a fantastic garden. We do get a long season of interest and bloom, and there are ways to do this. But again, it's a manicured area. It's definitely not as you would find it out in nature and habitat, but we're bringing pieces of things, um, even though they're native, from a broad range of what we're considering native to fit into a small environment. So some of the plants that are in here, while yes, they're native, they may not be found growing natively underneath the cottonwood tree, but we're increasing the biodiversity. We're just limiting the palette to our geopolitical border of sort of a Colorado native. But within this space, again, we've got a lot of great plant select options and a lot of great plant select things that have come to the program. Again, a classic for the fall is the baby blue rabbit brush, Chrysothamnus nauseosus. Um, a wonderful plant kind of just coming into bloom. And you can see tucked in, growing in with it, another great Colorado native um, is Zinnia grandiflora, the gold on blue. Um, and gold on blue is a selection because it has more um, of a golden flower with a blue foliage. But it's a selection off of the native and it fits into this ecology. Here we have the idea of, of a grassland. So we have buffalo grass. And coming up through the buffalo grass, we have some other elements um, like the little blue stem. We have some other native forbs and things coming in. And then the retibita that um, does such a great job in native landscapes. More of the zinnia. And then a great plant from the Great Plains. This is Penstemon grandiflorus prairie jewels. And this is a wonderful plant that mixes in with our native landscapes. You can see you get the height. When it was in bloom, prairie jewels is a mix of colors. Oftentimes when you find Penstemon grandiflorus growing wild, it's a soft, sort of whitish blue, almost a lilac color. But the plant select introduction has reds and pinks and whites. So it's a wonderful expression of the plant's potential that we utilize in a garden space. So moving through here, um, we have artemisias and sages that blend with grasses, um, that have wildflowers mixed in with them. But you can kind of see we're getting late in the summer and we're in a little bit of one of those transition zones where not as much is happening. We're waiting for some of the things to come on. The vernonia will be coming in soon, um, but the retibitas and pinstamins have sort of finished off. Another great plant select plant for the native landscape. This is Pawnee Butte Sand Cherry. And this was actually collected by Jim Borland and Paniote Keladis at the base of the Pawnee Buttes in Northern Colorado. Not the type habitat for Prunus bessii, but being that it's low and flat and creeping, um, gives it a unique feature in the landscape. And it, you can see it, it works really well. And it's one of those plants that doesn't need to be isolated and put into an island by itself. It can create habitat, it can play with grasses. We have Allium cernuum coming up through it. So this is a plant that provides a lot for a living garden and an ecosystem beyond the static landscape. The berries are very attractive to birds. The flowers are early in the spring, smell very sweet and are really attractive to early season pollinators. And if you can see there's damage on some of these leaves through here. And some of the cuttings that come through here are leaf cutter bees. So this is also providing home to some of the native pollinators. If we look really closely and watch, there's some wasp activity in here. There's pollinators coming through here. Wasps will actually come through and they're meat eaters. So they may be eating some of the aphids or some of the pests that are on here, but that's part of creating that living system. It's knowing that insects, birds, little mammals, field mice, snakes are part of this living system that makes all of this stuff work together.
um, a wonderful habitat plant. And you can see it grows pretty thickly and densely. It allows other plants and it grows well with its friends around it, but it creates a space for itself. So having and using plants in a landscape in this manner, where they're allowed to intermingle and touch, um, really creates more of a living landscape and not so much that static, um, that static landscape. You've got a living garden space here.